Hi everyone and welcome to the February 2021 edition of the CNCF End User Technology Radar. I'm really excited to be here with our radar, te radar team to share with you the results from the CNCF End User community. So, here we go. Um, a little bit about me, my name is Cheryl, I'm the VP of Ecosystem at CNCF. And my mission is to really help end users be successful as they're adopting Kubernetes, um, Prometheus, Envoy, and all of the other open source cloud native tools. You can find me at my blog uh, at my blog at or on Twitter at oishovel. The CNCF end user community is a group of more than 140 companies spanning some of the smallest most innovative startups all the way up to the biggest global household names. And these are the companies that are using cloud native technologies to deliver their applications and services. So without further ado, let's go into the technology radar. First of all, let me please introduce the February 2021 radar team. First off, I have Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi. Uh, so I'll introduce myself briefly. Um, I'm a site reliability engineer at our studio. Uh, at our studio, we're looking to we're building out a uh, a cloud IDE platform for data scientists, um, and we're obviously doing so with as many cloud native technologies as possible. I'm looking to add more all the time. Nice, good stuff. And we have Andrea. Please introduce yourself. Hi, Terry. Hi, everyone. My name is Andrea Garbuzera. I'm an engineer and co-founder at OutKeys. OutKeys is a company that is offering uh, authorization as a service in the cloud. Uh, I used to be an embedded engineer for more than a decade. And then OutKeys uh, was my opportunity to turn into cloud native aware technologies. Uh, so at OutKeys, uh, we uh, really consider um, cloud native technologies uh, as the future. That's the reason why we joined CNCF as end user. And that's one of the reasons why uh, I'm here uh, participating at this radar team. Fantastic. And? We have two more who were part of the radar team, but unfortunately couldn't join the recording for today. So I want to thank them for their input and their hard work on compiling this radar. So first of all, the topic was secrets management. Andrea, why did you choose secrets management for the topic? And tell me a little bit about what is secrets management. Okay. Um... When we started with this uh, radar team task, we had to choose a topic. Uh, many, many of them were uh, quite interesting, but we ended up choosing a secrets management, uh, especially because, um, yeah, from my point of view and from my company point of view, uh, security is uh, is a focus uh, in our business. Uh, we are basically, basically selling authorization in the cloud. So we have to orchestrate a lot of services. Many of them are exposed. And whenever you have to coordinate all these um, uh, services, uh, you need to deal with how uh, each of them uh, authenticate with each other. Uh, so secrets are at the base of, this, um, uh, of these mechanisms. And uh, as soon as a company needs to automate its uh, operation process, uh, it needs to deal with how to store secrets. Secrets management is basically um, the set of techniques that are used for uh, keeping those uh, secrets safe, uh, usually by storing them somehow Encrypt, encrypted somewhere, uh, but yeah, we 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 choose to to focus our radar on this topic because it's not that easy as it can uh, appear at first glance. Um, 
so that's that's basically why we 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 had this uh, this this decision to 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 focus on secrets management for for the radar for this this month radar. Steve, anything you want to add? I don't think so. I think he did a great job. <laughs> okay, so awesome. All right, so just a reminder for what this technology radar looks like. So the goal of the technology radar was to survey the end user community and ask the people as a community, what do you currently use and recommend internally for your own company? And there were three main options. So adopt, meaning we clearly recommend it, we've run it, we've used it for a long time and it's pretty stable, pretty mature. Trial, meaning we've used it with some success. So if you have a need for this, then you should be looking at this tool. Or assess, meaning we've tried it out, we think it's promising, maybe it doesn't cover every use case or maybe it's not quite mature yet, um, but you should consider it anyway. And then there was a fourth option that people could choose, which was hold. Hold meaning we don't use this solution anymore. Uh, we recommend something else. And then the goal is to look across all of the companies in the end user community and put those tools into one of these three categories. So this time, let me start with Steve. When you went into this, what did you expect? Sure. So I, um, I think my expectations were potentially a little naive in that I, in looking at the space of secrets management, I mainly expected organizations to be using the, uh, the offerings by the public cloud that they were already in. It's, it's obviously a much easier, a much easier choice to adopt just essentially a separate set of APIs from the same public cloud that you're already using. If you are embedded in a public cloud, if you're using a single public cloud, it's kind of a, an easy choice, uh, or at least in my view, um, it, it seems like a very easy choice uh, to just um, adopt it, you know, a new small piece, a new small service that is, that is offered by those clouds. Is that what you're doing at our studio? Uh, in in some way, shape, or form, yes, <laughs> that's at least one of the ways that we uh, that we manage uh, secrets. Definitely, is um, as a small team, it's kind of an, an easy pickup to uh, to use an additional uh, service from a public cloud than to you know kind of build out our own in-house tool or um, uh, or adopt a, 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 an, an additional tool that we have to run, take care of, maintain. Andrea, what about you? What did you expect? Uh, speaking for myself, uh, I really expected a lot of uh, fragmentation in this kind of survey. Uh, this is probably coming from uh, a light survey that we and the light investigation that we did in the past for uh, for our company on, on the topic. So I'm not really surprised that we had very spread. Um, answers and many, many tools or uh, frameworks that have been named by, uh, by the people participating to, to, to the radar. Um, another expectation was that uh, in, in this very fragmented landscape, uh, we could have found uh, anyway some uh, direction. And that, that's what we ended up with. We will see later. Cool. Okay, so our next step was to survey those the end user community and ask them what were they using for secrets management. We actually had a lot more answers, a lot more solutions than this. As Andre, you were saying, there were a lot. There were a lot of different frameworks here. Um, we ended up, I think, cutting off here because we felt like there wasn't enough data to really justify um, kind of making a decision on it. And also, if I remember correctly, AWS was originally split into a couple of different options, right? So um, Andrea or Steve, do you want to talk about why we ended up collapsing those? Uh, so I think that we were partially motivated to collapse uh, AWS 
uh, there were definitely more of AWS's discrete secrets like services and we collapsed them in part because AWS has made the choice to make each piece of secret management uh, a separate service in their in their public cloud offering and and it definitely skewed the the results uh, since there was huge numbers of adoption um, simply by virtue of it not any one service uh, handles each of the each of the parts of secrets management that a, that a, a typical organization may want to use. And so there were, we had a lot of results where a single company uh, was using all of the AWS secrets services and and it ended up uh, ended up kind of mm. skewing the, the vote count towards uh, towards their offerings. Yeah, that's right. So we did collapse them just so that this wouldn't end up being you know five or six different. AWS tools, right? So you can see from the votes here, um, same as we saw on the last slide, green means adopt, the blue is kind of trial, yellow is assess, and then gray is hold. So these are the results that we got from the end user community. And then our next step was to basically decide from these tools, which ones did we think overall the community would have recommended as adopts or trial and assess. And this is where we ended up landing. So Steve or Andrea, do you want to comment on this? Um, more than uh, commenting on how this uh, happened to be uh, distinguished between adopt and trial with which was kind of a discussion in terms of number of votes to to consider for uh, for the different categories uh, there's there's a point that is is not possible to see from this table uh, there, there's a solution that uh, in reality is um, uh, probably an heterogeneous uh, set of solutions uh, which is everything homegrown. Uh, there were some some meaningful um, uh, votes in the poll, which were referring to um, in-house solution for uh, secrets management. Uh, we choose not to represent them in this uh, final result table because they are definitely uh, co solution which are quite different from each other. So. Um, we we ended up after a discussion uh, between the team uh, that it was necessary to to investigate further if we wanted to expose which which of these technologies were kind of interesting for for others potentially. But when you when you have to do uh, when you can, when you face a homemade solution, it's usually something that is very difficult to. To use for others because they're very usually tailored to to, to specific situation. Uh, that's something I, I I wanted to point out because it, it's not in the table, but it was something that came out from the poll anyway. So yeah. um, I can definitely add to that. I think um, as we've kind of alluded to a handful of times, there was a really long tail of tools that were used here and uh, that, that were reported as being in use. Um, and so while it's pretty obvious from the votes which, uh, which of these tools made sense as adopt, uh, the, the remaining tool sets were, uh, there, was a little, there was a little less obviousness out of them, um, mainly because the, the, the tail was so long and there were so many votes spread across so many different solutions that, uh, that there, we kind of had to use a, a bit of judgment <laughs> going down and where to really stop uh, in this list. Okay, great stuff. So this is what the final radar looks like. So in the adopt section, we had HashiCorp Vault, AWS Secrets Manager, Certificate Manager, and AWS KMS. In trial, we had Bitnami Sealed Secrets and Encrypted Repositories. And in Assess, we ended up with GCP Secrets Management and SOPS. So next up, I wanted to ask the Radar team, from looking at the data that people submitted and from your own experience and what you were expecting going into this, 
what did you find surprising or interesting or noteworthy themes to point out? So Steve and Andrea and the team put together four themes for us and I'd like us to talk a little bit about those now. The first one is Vault. And the theme is that Vault has the broadest adoption across many companies and many industries. So Steve, why don't you start? Of course. Uh, so I can I can say uh, myself and a handful of uh, the Radar members were were very surprised at the the, at the the fact that there was such widespread adoption of Vault. Uh, not because it's not a, an extremely useful tool, but simply because it has a, a pretty high cost of entry. Um, it's a uh, it's its operational burden is is generally uh, much larger than some of the other uh, some of the other tools on this list, um, and so we were I, I personally was pretty um, pretty confused to see this. Uh, but then when we start when we once we started talking a little bit deeper about it, we started realizing that um, you know this makes this actually makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, for one point, it is uh, it has an extremely strong showing because it does. A lot of what the other tools do, but in a cloud agnostic way. Uh, if, organization, if organizations are split across multiple cloud providers, um, if they have large footprints in multiple clouds or on-prem, um, Vault is a is a pretty is a pretty great tool in order to uh, in order to solve that problem because it's comprehensive and it doesn't require uh, uh, any more lock any more uh, vendor lock in uh, in a particular public cloud, obviously. Being able to be used on prem, you know, across multiple cloud offerings without having to change tactics. Um, uh, we also uh, we also kind of came through with this idea that uh, this broader adoption really kind of makes sense when you put it in the context of offering it as an alternative to an in-house solution rather than everyone going off and building their own secrets management tool. Vault is a great tool for uh, that is very comprehensive and is able to kind of. Uh, allow people to to simply adopt it and its uh, set of of requirements, and uh, rather than having to, you know, go off and write a write a solution for each new secret problem that they have, so that uh, can definitely lead to a higher adoption rate. And it's great. Cool. Okay. In that case, let's go on to the second theme. Now, Andrea, I'd like you to comment about this one. So after Vault, organizations tended to use the native solutions from their public cloud provider. Yep, as, as Steve already pointed out before, this, this was something that we expected uh, when we choose the, the topic for, uh, for the radar. Uh, we, we tried to, to reason a little bit around the motivation for this. And of course, we, uh, we ended up uh, um, considering that uh, the, cloud, the, the um, cloud providers' uh, native solutions are usually the closest to, uh, to the user. So they are the, the, definitely one of the first choices if they uh, end up being uh, uh, covering the needs uh, that, uh, that the user has. They are probably uh, the fastest to uh, to bring up, so this is something expected. Uh, anyway, we also uh, took some time to discuss about these results in terms of uh, the potential uh, lock-in effect that uh, it can uh, um, it, it can have on uh, on a company decision, uh, which of course is already. Um, uh, part of the choice of uh, of cloud provider, uh, yeah. So probably uh, we ended up uh, saying that uh, there are two different uh, um, type of organization. Those that are split across different uh, cloud providers uh, already considered the lock-in problem. Uh, uh, in depth, and they probably ended up choosing uh, um, an agnostic tool for uh, for uh, for the uh, secret for the secret management needs. Um, smaller companies, which are uh, at their first uh, 
cloud native uh, experiences are more likely to stick with uh, the solution provided by by their 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 cloud providers. So that's that's what we 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 put into evidence. Um, and what do you do at AuthKeys? Because AuthKeys is pretty small, right? Yeah, that's pretty small. Uh, we we are sticking with. Uh, a solution that are kind of naive in this this uh, in this scenario because the team is very small. So uh, secret security is uh, is mostly managed by um, encrypted uh, repositories, encrypted that data within repositories. We are not yet concerned about uh, uh, sharing the content of uh, repositories uh, across teams. So um, we are good enough for now, but of course we are looking uh, at more uh, a structured solution for the future because the problem will come up as soon as um, the team grows and, and we have the need to uh, give different visibility to, to, to secrets to, to different, different teams. So it, it's something we are working on. So the radar is uh, definitely a good opportunity to to figure out what uh, what others that are bigger than us already went through. Cool, thank you. Okay, yeah, let's talk about certificate manager because this one is perhaps a little bit different. Steve, what do you think about certificate manager becoming popular? Uh, so on this radar, we you know we noticed it popping up, popping up a lot, and and it was definitely surprising because it's relatively new and it uh, it's not a general purpose tool uh, or and it doesn't have like a general purpose solution for many different secret aspects, um, but it is uh, one of the things that we kind of that we kind of returned from this is that because it has really tight integration with Kubernetes, um, it it can not only be seen as an easy, quick pickup for those who are already using Kubernetes um, when it comes to <laughs> managing certificates, um, but, uh, but also that uh, it, it kind of leads us to believe that certificate management is a, a really high concern. It's top of mind for those who are adopting Kubernetes. And so um, that certificate manager kind of comes along uh, in, even though it is relatively new because, it's, because it solves a specific problem in a simple way. Um, uh, for those that are using Kubernetes, it's a, it's a, it's a really, it was a really rapid and easy choice mm. for that ecosystem. Okay, let's go to our fourth theme. Um, other solutions in the space are fragmented across various levels of maturity and complexity. Andrea, over to you. Um, yep. Um... Yeah, as, men as mentioned before, we we ended up with very spread data uh, from the poll. Um, so this this was in part expected, at least uh, from my point of view. Uh, but we also considered that uh, some of these solutions appear to be uh, at different level of maturity. Uh, complexity is, of course, another aspect that is probably responsible for uh, some uh, company to, to, to steer towards some solution instead of others. Uh, so what we ended up uh, um, uh, resuming uh, on, this, uh, on this aspect is that uh, there is probably not, not already a best practice uh, for managing secrets. This is probably something that can uh, come up in the future because uh, secrets management is not rocket science. It's basically um, encryption and good practice in, uh, uh, in, in, in workflows. So it's probably something that is, uh, in my opinion, and I guess all, all, uh, all the radar team uh, also said uh, something like this, it's going to converge into more, uh, um, more concrete uh, best practices for the future. So it's an ongoing process. It's probably something that is, it's, it's not steady uh, at the moment. Okay, yeah, thank you for that. Um, Steve or Andrea, 
any other thoughts, comments, takeaways that you want to make on your radar? I think so. I think this covered. Nope. I think we, all my we have been exhaustive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, and then just one final question to you. So how did you actually find the experience of creating this radar? I let Steve okay. answer first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was um, it was an interesting process to go through. It's it's interesting to see that amongst CNCF community members, uh, there is a, an inherent goal not to reinvent the wheel um, and uh, taking through that kind of getting a chance to participate in the radar and see that a lot of a lot of different organizations of a lot of different sizes are are implementing solutions around the same topic in the same fashion or in a handful of the same fashions um, is really promising and uh, and being able to, to, to participate in this kind of uh, and perpetuate that notion of, of not having to reinvent the wheel because there are some some tools that are ready and able to be adopted by uh, by organizations looking to solve these same problems is, has been really great. Yeah, I'm sharing Steve's uh, um, uh, thinking uh, and, and I, I couldn't have said it better. Uh, I just want to, to add that I, I'm very thanks, uh, thankful uh, to CNCF for the opportunity to participate in this, uh, in this task, in this radar team task. It was very enjoyable to, to create a small team in a short time and um, yeah, being able to, to, to share our experience and, and at the same time to be uh, working on this data and, and figuring out uh, uh, what the main threats were and, uh, and the main themes that uh, came out from, uh, from the survey. So really great experience and I'm very happy to to be part of it. Well, Steve and Andrea and the other two members of our radar team, um, I really want to thank you for your time and, and putting your thoughts and effort into this. It's been really fun to work with both of you. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, if you want to check out previous editions of the radar, you can go to radar.cncf.io. So far, we've had three editions on database storage, observability, and continuous delivery. So please go and check those out. And then if you want to get involved, um, we want to really reflect what people care about, what the wider community is thinking about. So if you want to help decide what the next topic for the next radar will be, you can go to cncf.io slash tech radar. This is just a GitHub issue where you can put in something that you're interested in, you can vote up and down and the next radar team will take a look at that to see what people are interested in hearing about. Uh, please, if you also come and join the end user community, if you are currently using Cloud Native, you can contribute towards the future radars. You can come and be part of the radar team. So just check it out, cncf.io slash end user. And then last but not least, I'm always looking for ways to make this more valuable and usable and easy to understand. So if you have any feedback about how we're producing the radars or anything you'd love to see a bit more of or a bit less of, just send an email to info at cncf.io. And that is the end of this edition of The Radar. So once again, Steve and Andrea, uh, it's been a pleasure to have you on and to talk to you today. So thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure of mine. Thank you, Sherry, for, for managing this team and helping out with, uh, with making it uh, so, so nicely working. And to, I say bye-bye to everyone and stay tuned for the next Radar. <laughs> I echo all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank awesome. Thank you so much.